Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Marvel's She-Hulk unveiled the MCU's new hulked out attorney at law. Jennifer Walters, Tatiana Maslany rendered in a bulky verdigree that even she seems a bit uncomfortable with. The CGI, VFX, and overall design seems to be all anyone can focus on at the moment, which is crazy to me, because how could you think about anything other than an MCU superhero carrying a bodybuilder off to Pound Town? Well, on one giant green hand, this is the first trailer footage we're seeing, and often Marvel trailers show us unfinished VFX that are vastly improved upon when the content releases. Marvel even spruces up the VFX between theatrical release and Blu-ray release, even sometimes between weeks while a movie is still in theaters. They've also been caught quietly updating the VFX on Disney Plus episodes after the initial upload. So even our perceptions of what constitutes proper standards of Disney live action VFX is pretty hard to measure. But on the other giant green hand, these Marvel Disney Plus series are reported to have budgets of tens of millions of dollars per episode. Episode. And if the effects were still being rendered, why not wait to release the trailer until you had footage or even just one big reveal shot that you can be proud of? And if Hulk looks so good in this footage, why not the title character you know all eyes are going to be on? Folks, I spend a lot of my time here at New Rockstars analyzing visuals and VFX, and I come from it not from a technical approach, but from a narrative and a character vector. And I can't help but laugh whenever I see people commenting things like, the CGI looks like shit, and that is a fact, I am an expert. Because folks, there is no objective scale of good versus bad CGI. It's far more complex than that. Now, Disney, of course, has no excuse. They have access to cutting edge VFX technology and based off of the billions they're raking in, they really should spare no expense. But with any title ever, it's VFX is really a factor of two things, creative priorities and economic pressures. Because folks, the reason we saw a She-Hulk trailer this week is that Disney had to drop this trailer to excite advertisers at their upfronts. Meanwhile, the VFX artists who are working on She-Hulk have a task more difficult than any other Marvel Disney Plus title yet, so go easy on them. This isn't just creating a beautiful backdrop of the TVA or the beautiful riches of Khonshu's skull. There is a reason why Marvel Studios does not want to commit to making a live-action Hulk title and removed Hulk from the final act of Infinity War. Making a believable, cool Hulk face is really, really hard. And with that, I agree that the imagery of She-Hulk in this trailer doesn't really live up to what we expect from Marvel. But here is the secret with VFX. It is a magic trick. We know in our brains it is not real, but we suspend our disbelief and we just go along with it. If you look hard enough, you can find imperfections in anything. From a velociraptor in Jurassic Park vanishing for a frame or two in a T-Rex's mouth, to Elsa's ponytail magically clipping through her arm during Let It Go. It does not matter! Unless, as you are watching the full movie in the theater, or the full episode on your TV, it actively distracts you in that moment from enjoying the narrative beat. Now, of course, the tough sell with She-Hulk is her unusual appearance is really the core hook of the series. Like, we are totally invited to scrutinize her appearance. The trailer even compliments her ass. Your ass looks crazy right now. Now, you may have seen the criticism that She-Hulk in this trailer and other CGI characters people have complained about fall within what's called the Uncanny Valley. But what is that really? The Uncanny Valley was a term coined in 1970 by Japanese robotics engineer Masahiro Mori, who observed that as robots became more and more human-like, they risk crossing into a threshold in which their emulation of human appearances and mannerisms backfires as we suddenly see them as psychologically unnerving and suddenly they look like soulless flesh puppets. Now, animated films have had mixed success with this over the years. Pixar has had tremendous success deferring to non-human characters and then loading up those characters with deeply human emotion. Meanwhile, movies like The Polar Express pushed human realism way too far and slipped right in that valley. The first design of Sonic? Valley. Cats? Valley. But the way successful CGI characters have avoided the valley is by reimagining their entire anatomical structure. Gollum in the Lord of the Rings films is a hideous goblin humanoid, but has a misshapen skull imbued with highly expressive human features, enormous eyes with proportionally overwide pupils, and a tremendous attention to detail into the facial skin. So human skin is semi-translucent. It's made up of several layers of epidermis covering muscles muscles all working in harmony, covered with hairs and indentations, blemishes, various imperfections that our minds perceive as realistic. And light catches all of these layers, 
creating what's called subsurface scattering. Now, in the Avatar films, the Na'vi look pretty good because of all the texturing, the way the various layers of their skin and the hairs on their skin respond to light. And when we see them, our brains don't say, hey, that looks weird, because they're totally different skulls. They only vaguely evoke Zoe Saldana and Sam Worthington. Now, texturing is what Marvel VFX crews have gotten really, really good at. The hairs and the grains on Thanos' face, the lines and the creases of Smart Hulk's face. Thanos isn't just Josh Brolin's face on a purple body. Smart Hulk isn't just Ruffalo's face on a green body. They have completely different skulls underneath all that skin. That mannerisms that just evoke the way those actors talk. And it doesn't really matter that they're ugly because they are meant to be intimidating or comedic. And herein lies the challenge with She-Hulk. Now, whether you're a Marvel hero battling off the Sinister Six or just fighting off some sinister snacks, it's hard to find healthy snacks that taste great. Well, thankfully, Tootaloo is here to help. Tootaloo is a tasty snack with functional benefits such as supporting focus, gut health, energy, and skin so that you can be your best you. Hot to Trot is a spicy citrix mix. Smoke Show is BBQ. Slow Your Roll is maple. And Turning Heads is chocolate flavored. I'm gonna try Slow Your Roll. It's got uh, a sweet maple mix of sprouted nuts and seeds, chewy superfruits, coconut, reishi, ashwagandha, makunda. I, I don't know what all these things are, but it sounds good. Let's try a bit. Mmm. Oh, this is good. Oh, this is really good. Oh, it's so tasty. I'm gonna do my toodaloo dance. Toodaloo, toodaloo, I like eating toodaloo. So toodaloo is a unique trail mix packed with healing adaptogenic herbs like lion's mane and ashwagandha that helps your body's natural ability to relieve stress and produce energy. They are non-GMO, plant-based, and grain-free. I'm told off-screen producer Zach and Tommy tried the Turning Heads chocolate clusters and devoured the entire bag before anyone else could get a chance to try them. Every order of their four tasty flavors heals both you and the planet by regenerating polluted farmland. So you feel great about what you are eating and buying. So go to my link at toodaloo.com slash new rockstars and use my code new rockstars to get $5 off your first order. Each ridiculously tasty flavor benefits your body in a different way. So choose your favorite flavor and benefit from skin health, digestion, focus, or relaxation. Thanks again to Toodaloo for sponsoring this video. She-Hulk is a multifaceted character in the pages of Marvel Comics, a deconstruction of the rage monster trope, and a satire of the over-sexualization of female superheroes. She must be strong and Hulk-like, yet beautiful. And as an embodiment of sexual liberation, someone you could imagine sleeping with a normal human. Now, Bruce Banner Hulk in this trailer looks as great as ever, and that's because the VFX team could just use the same character design and templates that were already created for Avengers Endgame. But with She-Hulk, they are designing this character from scratch, from the bones up. And unlike Hulk and unlike Thanos, she cannot be monstrous and caveman-like. She must still be attractive and retain the easy on the eyes dimensions of Tatiana Maslany's natural face. The result is that She-Hulk in this early footage often just looks like Maslany's face is digitally painted green and mapped into the middle of a huge mane of hair. It actually may remind you of Will Smith as Genie in the 2019 Aladdin, which was another instance where those filmmakers felt they needed to keep the precise contours of the actor's face. Now, I don't know if it's fair to say Maslany She-Hulk falls into the uncanny valley because I think the proportions of her face, regardless of the body it's on, isn't that freakish to look at. Like, I certainly don't think She-Hulk needs a Sonic-level redesign. Really, the main issue that they're still clearly working on is the texturing of She-Hulk's skin and how it responds to light. Like, notice how Hulk's skin looks bumpy and almost yellow-brown in natural light, but She-Hulk's skin is almost always bright lime green, just really one color tone. And when you look at it closely, her skin really lacks detail, causing it to, at this stage, look unnaturally smooth and rubbery, especially when it moves and shifts under the light. Now, it doesn't help that Disney uploads these trailers to YouTube super compressed, as is the compression on Disney Plus uploads, but honestly, that might be to gloss over some of these rough edges. Really, it's only distracting in character close-ups, like the slightly unnatural movement when she straightens up while looking at her phone and when she flirts with her date. Uh, this is the best date I've had in a while. Oh. Should we split some fries? Let's get those to go.
Now, while Maslany's voice is great there, the movement of her eyebrows, the cocks, and the smirk of her lips, they're just stiff and restrained. Probably not the same expression Maslany actually made under the mocap. The expressions have almost no effect on the surrounding skin, and as a result, we lose some of that flirtation. Now, again, all of this is still being rendered, and I think this scrutiny is completely overblown. Like all magic tricks, it's about the overall experience, and I think the tone and the world and the relationships will ultimately be what we most enjoy from this series. And I think the best example of why we should be optimistic about this is the final shot of the trailer, when She-Hulk carries her date off to the bedroom. It doesn't really matter how good She-Hulk's texturing looks here, because it's all about the goofy visual gag. It's a huge dude, completely smitten with being cradled. She-Hulk doesn't even struggle with the weight, and that's what's fun about it. And honestly, I do not know how they pulled off this shot. Like, I assume they suspended this actor with wires, but his foot knocks into the lamp, and that lamp light shifts on the furniture and on his feet. That that light shifting looking pretty practical. And something is clutching his back to crease his shirt like that. So was it Maslani on stilts, wearing a mocap suit with one of those character face popsicles over her head for the eyeline, holding this guy but assisted with wires? Or was she actually on a green screen set here, holding someone smaller or something smaller, and then they synced it with a shot of an empty practical set where they moved the lamp? I mean, it's just fun to think about all these permutations. Again, it's a magic trick. And that is how good the effects should be. You don't really know what the machinery is. And that's why, despite the unfinished VFX elsewhere in this footage, I still leave this trailer smiling and excited for the series. Good VFX is all about the narrative, the character, the moment, and the way the VFX interacts with the practical environment. So if She-Hulk is going to give us more moments like this, I think I'm going to love this show. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EAVoss. Follow New Rockstars. Subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.